Hi everyone, here we bring you a new video about the features and operation of the application G-Stomper Producer. On this occasion we will see all the aspects related to the graphical multi-track song arranger. Let's get started. The graphical multi-track song arranger is one of the core elements in the G-Stomper Producer. It lets you arrange your songs easily. Tap the screen to add song events. Drag them with your finger to move or resize song events. Copy, paste, single song events, or complete sections, and much more. This chapter spotlights all features of the song arranger and explains how to use them. G Stomper Producer has two main operation modes. Pattern operation for live usage. In this mode, you will have full control over the structure of your musical session. This means you initiate all structural changes such as track pattern changes and scene changes manually. Song operation for song creation, composition and playback. In this mode, the song arranger controls the structure of your musical composition. As a matter of course, it is still you who creates your composition using the graphical multi-track song arranger. But the actual track pattern changes and the scene changes will be done by the song arranger during playback, based on your composition. You can toggle between pattern and song operation, either by short-clicking the pattern song selection in the green project info display, or by long pressing the song arranger button. Whilst using the graphical song arranger, the song arranger button turns into mixer. Also, in this stage, you can toggle between pattern and song operation either by short-clicking the pattern song section in the green project information display or by long pressing the mixer button. In this chapter, we focus on the song operation. What is the global quantum? G Stomper Producer comes with a dedicated pattern sequencer per track each with a set of 64 track patterns, and each track pattern with independent size and time signature. That way you can, for example, mix a 4x4 kick drum pattern with a triplet open hi-hat at 5-8 pattern and a 3-16 closed hi-hat pattern. All of these patterns can have a different time signature, size and swing configuration. All track patterns and their individual timings are kept in sync by the global sequencer. The global sequencer has its own global timing, specified in beats per cycle. This is what we call the global quantum. The current position of the global sequencer within the global quantum cycle is called the global phase. It is reflected by the global phase process bar and the project information display in the toolbar on top. Having understood this, we are asked the following question. What is the global quantum mainly used for? Even though the global quantum is used in many situations, there are two primary uses, track sequencer synchronization and Ableton link synchronization. Track sequencer synchronization. The global sequencer uses the global quantum beats per cycle to keep all track sequences in sync with the global timing. The global sequenizer synchronizes musical beat, tempo, phase, and start-stop commands across all track sequences, independent from particular track patterns, time, signatures, and measures. While the global sequencer is running, you can stop or start every track sequencer independently, while always staying in time. You can schedule scene changes, switch your patterns at once, at the end of a global quantum cycle, independently from the particular track pattern time, signatures, and measures. Ableton Link Synchronization if you join an Ableton Link session, then the global quantum, the beats per cycle, is used as a loop cycle measure to be synchronized with the Ableton Link session. Ableton Link is a technology that synchronizes musical beat, tempo, phase, and start-stop commands across multiple Link-enabled applications running on one or more devices. Applications on devices connected to a local wireless network discover each other automatically and form a musical session in which each participant can perform independently. Anyone can start or stop while still staying in time. Anyone can change the tempo, the others will follow. Anyone can join or leave without disrupting the session. Ableton Link can be enabled in the global sequencer settings. To show up the global sequencer settings, either short-click the red marked areas in the project information display
or long press the play button. How to change the global quantum. How to change the global quantum. The global quantum can be changed in the global sequencer settings. To show up the global sequencer settings, either short click in the areas we marked in red in the project information display or long press the play button. The global quantum is set in beats per cycle and can have one of the following values. What is the global quantum used for in the song arranger? In addition to its technical use for track sequencer synchronization and Ableton link synchronization, the global quantum is also used in the song arranger as a visual help and to snap in and resize song events to logical dimensions. How to change the global quantum in the song arranger. To change the global quantum in the song arranger, simply click quantum display in the lower right corner to show up the quantum settings. The global quantum is set in beats per cycle and can have one of the following values. Note that the quantum settings provide quick access buttons for the most common values. What is the virtual quantum? The virtual quantum is an additional global dimension, and like the global quantum, it is specified in beats per cycle. The virtual quantum is just a virtual dimension, therefore the name virtual quantum, and a visual help to assist you in the song arranger. It is not used for any technical purpose. Well, then what is the virtual quantum used for? Unlike the global quantum, the virtual quantum is not used for any technical purpose such as track synthesizer synchronization or Ableton link synchronization. It is only used in the song arranger and only as a visual help and to snap in and resize song events to logical dimensions. As a matter of course, you can also snap in or resize song events to the global quantum. But in many situations, it is helpful to have different dimensions for global and virtual quantum because the logical or structural size of the song events does not always match with the technical dimension that it is used for synchronization. How to change the virtual quantum. To change the virtual quantum, simply click quantum display in the lower right corner of the song arranger to show up the quantum settings. The virtual quantum is set in beats per cycle and can have one of the following values. Note that the quantum settings provides quick access buttons for the most common values. The graphical multi-track song arranger in G-Stromper Producer provides up to 39 tracks. That is, up to 24 drum sampler tracks, up to 12 VAB synthesizer tracks, a dedicated tempo track, a send FX track, and a master track. How many drum sampler tracks and VAB tracks you actually see in the song arranger depends on your G-Stomper producer settings. By default, in most cases you'll have 12 drum sampler tracks and 5 VAB synthesizer tracks. Before looking at the editor features in detail, let's take a quick look at the general handling of a song arranger interface. Track headers. The track headers at the left side show the track names. Furthermore, the header buttons give you quick access to the underlying audio instrument module, e.g. a drum sampler, a synth, or the master section, as well as to the track mute and solo provided. The first button columns show the track names. Pressing a button in this column brings you quickly to the underlying audio instrument module. Press T1, for example, to show up the drum machine and automatically select T1. Press VTO3, for example, to show up the VAB synthesizer and automatically select VTO3. Press Master to show up the global mixer page where tempo, send effects, and master are located. The same happens when pressing send effects or tempo.
Use the M and S switches to mute or sew the particular tracks. An important notice, the mute and solo switches in G-Stomper Producer are per project. In other words, the mute and solo settings are saved with the project, but are not part of the particular patterns or sequences, and therefore can only be changed manually. In G-Stomper Studio, for example, mute and solo settings are per pattern. Scroll. Use the scroll bar at the bottom to scroll horizontally. The scroll bar at the right and the track headers to scroll vertically. Zoom. Short click the plus and minus buttons to zoom the grid in or out horizontally. Long press the plus and minus button to zoom the grid in or out vertically. Horizontal scale. The scale at the bottom of the song arranger grid shows the number of global quantum cycles at a particular position, which matches with the first number of the timing information in the project info display in the toolbar on top. Depending on the zoom factor, the scale might be more or less detailed. If you wish, you can optionally activate vertical grid lines. Just click the quantum display in the lower right corner to show up the quantum settings. And then activate the Activate Quantum Grid Lines checkbox. Markers and Cursor. The blue start marker and the red end marker are used to select mark a specific range of song. A marker range can then be used to loop that selection of the song. To select all song events in the marker range, or simply as visual help to keep track of the currently edited section. The green edit cursor or position marker with the grey thumb has two main functions. It shows the current playback position of the song. It is your edit cursor which determines the position where copied song events get pasted as part of all copy paste operations. To move the markers, activate the mark and cursor mode in the sidebar, and then simply drag their thumbs. Long press the mark and cursor button in the sidebar to show up the extended menu. Loop between markers. Activate the loop in mark switch in the sidebar to loop the section of the song between the start and end marker. Quantum Grid Lines The quantum grid lines deactivated by default are a visual representation of the global quantum and the virtual quantum. To enable the quantum grid lines, click the quantum display in the lower right corner to show up the quantum settings. And then activate the Activate Quantum Grid Lines checkbox. If enabled, the global quantum is shown as a solid line and the virtual quantum as a dashed line. Likewise, you can also quickly enable or disable the quantum grid lines by long pressing the snap in mode button in the sidebar. Editor grid snap in modes. When moving or resizing song events, or when setting markers, these will always snap into a specific measure, depending on the selected snap-in mode. 
Short click the snap in mode button in the sidebar to toggle between the available modes. Snap in beat. Snap in global quantum default. Or snap in virtual quantum. Remember that the global quantum as well as the virtual quantum can be changed by tapping the quantum display in the lower right hand corner of the song arranger. Add single song event. Make sure that either edit or resize is activated in the sidebar. Then short click an empty spot in the song arranger grid within the track and at the position where you want to add the new song event. Finally, select the pattern to be added as song event. Song events are always added at the start of the global quantum cycle. 1.10, 2.10, 3.10 and so on. And an added song event is always the size of one global quantum cycle, independent of the size of the reference pattern. However, it is very important to bear in mind that as a matter of course, you can, if required, resize a selection of song events to the original size of the reference patterns. Later, we'll see in depth how to perform this action. Add song events for a complete scene. Make sure that either edit or resize is activated in the sidebar. Then long press an empty spot in the song arranger grid at the position where you want to add the new song events. Finally, select the scene to be added as song events. An important point. When adding a complete scene, empty track patterns, such without audible content, are ignored and not added as song events. Tempo, FX and master patterns are always included. And as we commented in the past, song events are always added at the start of a global quantum cycle. Added events always have the size of one global quantum cycle and you can resize a selection of events to the original size of the patterns. Select single song event. Make sure that either edit or resize is activated in the sidebar. Then short click the song event that you want to select. Or to deselect if it was already selected. When performing this action, you should pay attention to the status of the multi-select button. In this example, multi-select is off, which means only one song event can be selected at a time. Note that as soon as you select another song event, the previously selected event will be automatically deselected. Select multiple song events by clicking them one by one. Make sure that either edit or resize is activated in the sidebar. Also ensure that multi-select is turned on, but without swipe over extension, without the yellow border. Then short click the song events one by one that you want to select. Or to deselect if a particular event was already selected. Note that as soon as you turn multi-selection off, the selection will be cleared. Select multiple song events by swiping over them. Make sure that either edit or resize is activated in the sidebar. Also ensure that multiple select is turned on with swipe over extension. To activate the swipe over extension, simply tap the multi select again after turning it on so that it gets a yellow border. Then swipe your finger over the song events that you want to select or to deselect if a particular event has already been selected. Note that as soon as you release your finger from the screen, the swipe over extension is automatically turned off, but multiple select remains on. Select deselect multiple songs events via menu. Make sure that either edit or resize is activated in the sidebar. Whether or not multiple select is on does not matter in this case, a selection via menu automatically activates multi-select if required. In this example, we have placed the start and end markers at 5.10 and 13.10 in advance. Long press the multi-select button in the sidebar to show up the extended selection menu. Then choose select to all between markers from the menu. This activates multi-select and then automatically selects all song events that are at least partially between the start and end markers. 
change pattern of selected song events. Make sure that either edit or resize is activated in the sidebar. Select the song events you want to change and then long press one of the selected song events. Select the pattern for the selected song events. A small clarification. When changing the pattern song events, then the selected pattern slot, in this case AO2, is always referred to as the related track pattern set of the track where a particular song event is located. If the selection contains more than one song event, a confirmation pop-up is shown to ensure that you do not change the patterns of a larger amount of song events by accident. Once confirmed with OK, the selected song events get updated with the selected pattern slot, in this case AO2. Drag move selected song events. Make sure that edit is activated in the sidebar. Select the song events you want to move and then touch and drag the selection to move the selected song events and release your finger. Song events can only be moved in horizontal direction. In other words, you cannot drag a song event from one track to another track. Move selected song events via menu. Make sure that edit is activated in the sidebar. Select the song events you want to move and then long press the edit button in the sidebar to show up the extended edit menu. Then choose left align select events from the menu. This aligns the selected song events to the most left edge of the selection. To align the selected events on the right, select the Right Align Selected Events option in the Edit menu. Drag Resize Selected Song Events. Make sure that Resize is activated in the sidebar. Select the song events you want to resize and then touch and drag the selection to resize the selected song events. Song events can only be resized at the right edge, in other words, at the end of a song event. You cannot resize a song event at its left edge while leaving its right edge in place. Resize selected song events via menu. Make sure that resize is activated in the sidebar. Select the song events you want to resize and then long press the resize button in the sidebar to show up the extended resize menu. Then choose Resize Selected Events to Virtual Quantum from the menu. This resizes the selected song events to the size of one of the virtual quantum cycle. As shown in the quantum display in the lower right corner, the virtual quantum in this example is 16 beats. One virtual quantum cycle corresponds to four global quantum cycles, since one global quantum in this example is four beats. Remember that the horizontal scale at the bottom shows the number of global quantum cycles. Copy selected song events. Make sure that either edit or resize is activated in the sidebar. Select the song events you want to copy. Keep in mind that multi-select must be activated in order to select multiple song events. Now click on the copy button to copy the selected events. Likewise, you can long press the copy button in the sidebar to show up the extended copy menu and then choose copy from the menu. Once the selected song events are copied to the clipboard, the edit cursor is automatically set to the end of the selection so that you can just press paste to add the copied selection right after the original song events. An important point. When you just short click paste in the sidebar, then the default operation paste mix is used. Paste mix simply adds the previous copied song events at the edit cursor position, regardless of whether the song events exist at this position or not. This can result in overlapping song events. The operations paste, insert and paste overwrite are explained in the following chapters. The paste process adds the previously copied song events at the edit cursor position and then automatically selects the added song events and moves the edit cursor to the end of the selection. That way you can paste the same selection multiple times without the requirement of manually setting the edit cursor every time.
Cut selected song events. Make sure that either edit or resize is activated in the sidebar. Select the song events you want to cut. Keep in mind that multi-select must be activated in order to select multiple song events. Long press the copy button in the sidebar to show up the extended copy menu. Then choose cut from the menu to cut the selected song events. When you cut, the selected song events are copied to the clipboard and the original selected song events are automatically deleted. Note that the edit cursor is not set at the end of the cut process. You must set the edit cursor manually before you paste the previously cut section. Paste Mix Song Events Make sure that either Edit or Resize is activated in the sidebar. Copy a selection of song events as we have described above. Once the selected song events are copied to the clipboard, the edit cursor is automatically set to the end of the selection, so that you can just press Paste to add the copied selection right after the original song events. Paste Insert Song Events Make sure that either Edit or Resize is activated in the sidebar. Copy a selection of song events as we have described above. Once the selected song events are copied to the clipboard, the edit cursor is automatically set to the end of the selection. Long press the Paste button in the sidebar to show up all the extended paste menu, and then choose Paste Insert from the menu. Paste Insert first moves all song events to the right side of the edit cursor, to the right in order to open a gap with the size of the copied selection. Then the Paste process adds the previously copied song events at the edit cursor position into the previously opened gap and then automatically selects the added song events and moves the edit cursor to the end of the selection. That way you can paste the same section multiple times without the requirement of manually setting the edit cursor every time. Paste overwrite song events. Make sure that either edit or resize is activated in the sidebar. Copy a selection of song events as we have described above. Once the selected song events are copied to the clipboard, the edit cursor is automatically set to the end of the selection. Long press the Paste button in the sidebar to show up the extended paste menu and then choose Paste Overwrite from the menu. Paste Overwrite first opens a gap with the size of the copied selection at the right side of the edit cursor by deleting all song events that at least partially intersect with the required gap. Then the Paste process adds the previously copied song events at the edit cursor position into the previously open gap and then automatically selects the added song events and moves the edit cursor to the end of the selection. That way you can paste the same selection multiple times without the requirement of manually setting the edit cursor every time. Delete selected song events. Make sure that either edit or resize is activated in the sidebar. Select the song events you want to delete. Keep in mind that multiple select must be activated in order to select multiple song events. Then short click the delete button in the sidebar to delete the selected song events. Likewise, you can long press the delete button in the sidebar to show up the extended delete menu. And then choose delete from the menu. If the selection contains more than one song event, a confirmation pop-up is shown to ensure that you do not delete a larger amount of song events by accident. Once confirmed with OK, the selected song events get deleted. Crop to selected song events. Make sure that either edit or resize is activated in the sidebar. Select the song events you want to crop. Keep in mind that multiple select must be activated in order to select multiple song events. Long press the delete button in the sidebar to show up the extended delete menu. Then choose crop from the menu. The crop process wants to delete all song events outside the selection, 
Therefore, a confirmation pop-up is shown to ensure that you do not delete a larger amount of song events by accident. Once confirmed with OK, the selected song events get cropped. In other words, all song events outside the selection are deleted while the selected song events remain and are moved to the song start position. As a result, you have a song arrangement that consists of your selection. The song arranger can visually and technically overlap song events in the same track. This is required to be able to play song events intuitively, move them around, resize them and so on. It's important to know that you can overlap song events with the same track in the UI and you can even properly save projects that contain song event overlaps. But the sequencer cannot handle overlaps. In other words, the sequencer of a particular track can always play one of its patterns at a time. Therefore, such overlaps are highlighted in red colour, so you will find them easily and fix them. We've come to the end of this video in which we've seen all the operations and functionalities related to the graphical multi-track song arranger in G-Stomper Producer. If you liked the video, click on like, subscribe to our channel and follow us on social networks to stay up to date with our new videos about G-Stomper Producer. See you next time!